Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are taking a very sad looking antique box and turning it into this lovely 1830s sewing case. So here's the box we're going to be working with today. Um, I bought it online, I think it was Etsy for like 30 bucks. And I spent a lot of time looking at original sewing boxes from like 1800 to 1830 to kind of get an idea of what I would like. And this one kind of just popped up and it happened to be pretty cheap so I figured, hey, why not? Um, it does have a little bit of um, mother of pearl on top here, which is really pretty. And there are some, definitely some condition issues, like there's you know, staining and there's several cracks. There's a really long one here. There's another one here. Um, it does close the little, I think these are called excursions. It's mother of pearl as well. Um, unfortunately it did not come with a key, but it is like a skeleton key lock. So I have like several skeleton keys and none of them are quite small enough. This is the closest I can actually fit it in there, but it doesn't go over, um, it won't actually go fully into the lock to turn it. So, I am currently on the lookout for a small skeleton key, preferably in like silver and not gold, but that's, you know, whatever I find. Um, the bottom is pretty damaged, and there's some cracking in there as well we're going to have to work on. It's definitely going to be a process. Um, inside, <laughs> it looks pretty sad. Um, lots of remnants of glue we're going to have to kind of, you know, slowly chip out. Um, it was covered with this lovely, I don't even know what you would call this, but it's reflective and it's horrendous. But I noticed because I was trying to peel it off when I first got it, look at this beautiful paper, marble paper at the um, back of it that it was covered in. So if, at some point in time, I'm sure this was a really nice little chest, but yeah, not anymore. And then we have the more lovely green reflective paper then. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. So I think first of all, we're going to try to peel it back and get all the lovely icky stuff off. Um, as much as we can anyway. And then we can talk about how we're going to restore it. Um, I've seen a lot of them that are, um, that were lined with silk. Um, several I saw were lined with um, silk in some places, but then they had marble paper in other places. And once I saw this marble paper, I was like, ooh, I want marble paper in part of it. So I actually have a stash of marble paper back when I tried bookbinding as a hobby. Um, <laughs> I wasn't very good at it. So I actually have found, I think I found, some marble paper that I think I will like for this project. So, yeah. That'll be fun. It actually is not my first attempt doing a box. It's the first time I've tried to restore one. The, um, my current jewelry box actually was a box I got from Hobby Lobby that I stained and um, made up quite nice and then, you know, covered the inside with velvet and there's some other cool stuff to it that it looks nice now, but I think it'll be fun to kind of restore an older one. At what point in this box's history did someone look at this green reflective paper and go, you know what would look amazing if I put this stuff on that really old antique box I own? I don't know what they were drinking because I don't think this ever looks good. Okay, so that took quite a while, but it is done now. Um, so there's this part, and I did leave this on the back. There's still some of the green on there because I was pulling off the marble paper and I didn't like it. I would rather keep this on there, so I left bits of that there, but the, you know, not that big of a deal. Everything else is off. Um, this one had some sort of silver paper underneath the green one, and in here it, there was white underneath it, so it took quite a while to get through all those layers, but yeah, I've been working on it for about a day and a half now, and it's done. The top part in here was the hardest to get off, all that orange did not want to come off. It looked like it was painted in there, but it is finally there. 
a little bit of glue residue left, but I think it'll be okay. So I think the next step is, well today's Saturday, and I usually go to my parents on Sunday and hang out with them on the farm. So what I think I shall do is bring this to my dad and ask him how to fix random cracks. And there's a whole crack in the bottom as well. So I'm gonna figure out how to do that. And I'm hoping he can help me because this one's missing a piece of wood that would have gone here. And it sits in here kind of funny, but I don't know why it's sitting. Like this side's really high and this side's really low. So I don't know, I may end up even asking if we can make a whole new tray, but we shall see tomorrow. So I have this marble paper for part of it. I think I will, I think I'm going to use, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to use it, use the marble paper yet. Um, I would prefer to have blue because the silk I'm going to use to recover it, the silk part is blue, but the originals I've seen, I have seen, they don't necessarily match. Like the paper will be like cream and then it'll be lined with blue silk. So I'm not terribly concerned about that part. And I did like, because this has some silver in it, um, which most of the pieces I'm using, like here's the button hook, um, are silver. And then I'm also using Mother of Pearl pieces to go with the Mother of Pearl on the um, sewing chest. Because I want this to look like a sewing kit that kind of came, like a sewing chest that you bought. Um, kind of a higher end one, since Sarah was very wealthy and attended school in Nashville and then New York City. And... Um, married a senator and was daughter of the wealthiest man in Texas. I think I need something fairly fancy for my sewing sewing kit for her. And so I'm going with Mother of Pearl to match the chest and um, silver. Um, but we shall see. I'm not entirely sure I'm going to use that yet. So it's an option. I have it. And this is the silk I bought. Um, this lovely aqua blue silk that I think will look really good with the Mother of Pearl bits and silver, and it looks really good with the dark wood. So, yeah, I think that's gonna be the plan as soon as I figure out how to, fi how to fix the parts of the case that need to be fixed. And then we start looking into the recovery portion of it. Okay, so looks like we're doing pretty good. So my dad helped me with this part. This part needs a little bit more fixing again, but um, the part that um, we did two different things, and on this side it worked, on this side it kind of didn't. So I'm going to take it back on Sunday, and we're going to finish it. But it's looking pretty good on this side. You can hardly tell if there's a crack there. My dad very kindly fixed this, so we have four sides now to our little tray. And we fixed the hole in the bottom, which is going to be covered in silk anyway, so I'm not concerned about the appearance of it, I just needed it to be sturdy. And then we fixed how it was fitting in there. So, I say we. My dad did all the work. So, yeah, it's all ready to start covering. I think I'm going to forego the paper and just do silk. Um, it's going to be easier. I think it's going to look nicer when it's all done together. I bought enough silk to cover the whole thing, I think. So, I go. we'll go ahead and work on that. Um, what I'm going to do first is See what kind of glue would work to get, put the silk on because I'm concerned about the silk getting too wet and changing colors and so I purchased some gum arabic and I made a glue with it and some glycerin and some water apparently that's how you make homemade super glue when I looked it up and so I thought we might do paint a little on stick it to this board and see if like an hour or so, how well it's stuck. And it is changing the color and how well it sticks to see if it's going to work. Because that is a concern of mine. I'm also going to try where I put the glue on the board and see if that helps any whatsoever. If it's just a sturdy, if it helps with the coloring issue. So yeah, we'll check back in a little bit and see how our two test samples went. Okay, so this didn't work. So I have pulled other glues, all the other glues I have in the house, and we're going to see which one of these works, if any. 
So I have a little strips of this. Start with the school glue. I'm going to leave these for a couple hours and see how they turn out. And hopefully we'll have a winner. We can start we can start recovering this box. Alright, so it's only been a few seconds for y'all, but it's been a couple months for me. I had other projects I decided that were more important than this one. So, yeah, it's been a little bit, but I think I'm ready to get back to it. Uh, so, first order of business, what I did was to take out the old lock, because even when I found keys that would fit inside, the lock wasn't doing anything. So I happened to have one that was very similar, a little lock mechanism, and I actually do have a key to go with it, so this thing's actually going to lock now. Um, and it just fits in here, so I think I'm going to drill some holes here and here to attach it with these lovely screws. And, yeah. So we have it in, so there's that part, and then there's, there's that part, let's see if it locks. Yay! Okay, so we have a locked box, and there's a little bit of a gap there, uh, mostly because I didn't set this like in to there, but I think I can live with that, at least for right now. So I suppose we can go ahead and start covering it. I think we're going to cover the lid first. I think it's going to be the easiest thing to do. So what I'm going to need to do is take a complete measurement of how long I need the silk to be. Plus a little bit of a fold over. So that's roughly 10 inches. I need it 11 inches. 11 inches by 14 inches. Alright, let's try this. Let's see if it works. I think I'm going to start from this top end, or this bottom end, really. And brush some glue on, and we'll start from a corner and work our way down. I think it's going to be the easiest way to do this. Alright, there's the first part. Yeah, just a little bit of spotting, but pretty good. Alright, there's our covered box. Um, it looks really nice. The only thing is once I added the fabric, this got a little tight in here. So it's kind of hard to get it in. But you, if you put this in first, it, it works. Let's just say that. It works now. So um, I don't think I'm going to undo it and have my dad cut it down. and Like that would just be too much work. So I think we're good with how it is. And there's the inside. So it didn't turn out perfectly, like there's some rippling in here, just some random ripples, and there's a few spots. And we're going to blame the eight-year-old son that I supposedly have um, for any and all mistakes in this project, and any and all mistakes for any other 1830s project. We're just going to blame John for everything. So I think the next step is going to be to partition out um, in here. But I don't have all the stuff yet, so we're going to wait on that. I did want to show you all what it looked like. Um, and then I have stuff that's going to go inside, of course. I've just been collecting things, so I have a little Mother of Pearl tape measure that is antique. I kind of wanted to find one that didn't have its original tape, because I actually have silk ribbon. That is the exact color of that that I was going to put it on, because this is already printed, and it looks better than anything I would be able to write. We're going to go ahead and keep this, but it's itty bitty, but it's kind of cute. 
I have on order several things. I have little scissors. I have um, I have some things to make spools with, um, which I have some of them. So a lot of those spool spool holder things, the thread holder things that I've seen on originals where Mother of Pearl, you kind of come apart and you put the wooden spool inside and it hides it and makes it really pretty. Usually had the really pretty floral Mother of Pearl outside. And I found these um, little pendants that very, very closely mimic the originals. They're not exact in pattern, but none of the originals were the same. It was all kind of, you know, different. So I think this very closely approximates what I need. Unfortunately, I wasn't sure what I needed exactly, so I only bought <laughs> I only bought three of them, and so I had to go buy like 20 more uh, for these spools. And so I'm waiting on those to get here, and they might be a while, but I did find some bone little beads that are going to be the little little holder, and I need to find something very small that's going to fit into this hole to kind of hold it together. Haven't found that yet. That is my project tonight to find. I have wooden spools. I'm not entirely sure if I need to leave them unfinished like this or if I should finish them. I need to go look and find some antique wooden spools from the 1820s and 30s to kind of decide what I need to do with that. Then we have our other Mother of Pearl stuff. So I have a you know, little owl, owl here and a matching little button hook. But yeah, I suppose we don't really have anything to do right now because we're waiting for the other stuff to get in. I think as soon as I get the scissors in, I could probably lay it out. Um, actually, I do have one more thing on order. I have um, a, a thimble. I found a Mother of Pearl thimble. So I'm going to use one thimble that's silver and one that's mother of pearl because I've seen original boxes with two thimbles and they had one of each so we're going to go with that because I think it would be cool and I'm always losing thimbles so I think it would be a really good idea to have more than one I think that's a great plan I don't think I'm waiting on anything else so it's just a matter of getting those in so that we can lay this out exactly how I want it um, I've, they're, the originals are all different ways so generally these little things and scissors are kind of in the middle somewhere and these I'm thinking on the aren't going to go on the outside kind of like this and I'm thinking I could probably fit five on each side which is a lot and I don't know if I need that many because um, usually I only use like five or six colors of thread and it'd be nice to have more but do I really need it it's kind of the question because I do most of my sewing with four really, really four colors I do gray, white, brown, and black pretty much get me through everything I do. And of course we're still in a pandemic so you never know when things are going to show up at my door. Alright, so here we are. Um, I'm starting to glue the section parts in I suppose. Um, so I got these done and these are going to be where the, this part sits. So basically I just took some book board um, which I had left over from another project and I covered it in the silk and I got pieces like this and that's kind of what I'm gluing in and these are probably a hair taller than they need to be but it's so close that I'm going to leave it I think now if those are in there we can go ahead and put in this part so basically I'm going to put glue on each end here and then glue and then glue all around the edges on this side and I'll just slide it in and it should stay. Alright, there we are. There's the corners at least. That's looking pretty and that looks pretty good, I think. So I have one more I'm gonna put in the exact center here. And on one side we're gonna have like scissors and all the other bits. And on the other side I'm probably gonna make two compartments, maybe for like closures and then like ribbons and something. I um, haven't quite figured out exactly what I'm doing for that part yet, but we're going to figure it out. I'm going to mark the exact center of this. I think I'm making a little cushion to put these on so they're not sitting like way down here. So maybe they can lay a little bit closer to the top. I'm not sure how I want to do that yet, but I do want this. Um, so like I want, I think I want thimbles here. I have two of them. And then maybe this 
and I almost made this into three apartments. I don't know what I would put there, but it might be a good thing to have three just, you know, in case I find something else I want to put in there. I could probably come up with something. Um, right now I have just a little bit. I'm going to be filling in this part, which is where the scissors and like uh, the button hook and that sort of thing are going to go. And so I'm looking at the originals again, and it looks like they're on some sort of cushion. And they're not set in there, they're set on top, which makes me think there's probably some sort of hidden apartment underneath there. And so what I did, um, I tried it with one, and we'll do the same thing with two others so you can actually watch me what I'm doing. But I took a piece of board, um, covered it with two layers of um, a cotton wool batting, and then covered it in the silk so it looks nice and plush. And this is going to fit in there just right. I had to lay something in there to keep it from um, actually like falling in like that. Um, I want to put in something just to kind of hold it up. But that fits, and so I can put all my other stuff on top. So I think it's going to be the best option for this. Is I have the silk ribbon in the same color, and I'm just going to make little I'm going to make little compartments, um, just little stitches. So I have this silk ribbon that's basically the same color. And I think it's doing little stitches, that's what I'm seeing, and then they will just kind of lay in here um, on the silk ribbon to kind of keep them where they need to be kept. And I'm thinking something more like that will be really nice. So let's go ahead and get stitching on this. And there's the nice little back to it. That way you don't see any of the nastiness. And then we have this part on top. So I let that dry for a little bit. And I think we might work on these two here. So I think first off, I'm going to need to make another partition here. And I'm going to go ahead and make a partition here. Um, I decided to put the thimbles on either side this way. And I'm going to lay in here a um, little emery cushion to kind of sharpen my needles. And a um, perhaps a little pin cushion that could just stick right here in the middle. Um, and then a um, thread waxer as well. So... I think we're going to make two more little partitions here and another partition probably right in here somewhere. I'm thinking I might put my needle book when I get that done inside here. Have that sit on top. And then these can be like notions such as ribbons and laces, um, buttons, hooks and eyes, and that sort of thing. Um, Alright, so here we are. I have all that put in. So there's like little boards here it's going to keep my lids from going too far down. I have this one set in already. It's looking really good. And then this part, which we got to figure out which way it goes. Okay. I'm going to need it just this hair smaller. So let's go ahead and, there you go. So that's a good size now. And it fits in there really well. So what I did is I took two pieces of um, cotton wool batting and I put a small one in the center and I want to put one that's exactly the size on top that kind of gives it a little plush. And then I'm going to cut out some silk that's just a little bit bigger on all sides than what I need it to be. And I'm just going to glue all these this way and kind of fit it all there. And here we are. So we're basically ready to assemble this thing, which is really awesome. I'm super excited. I have been working on this since June, and it is the first weekend in October. So it has been a long time coming, but I am very pleased with how it's turning out. So I went ahead and filled these spools with silk thread. Um, so I have my silks on this side and my cottons on this side. I can't find my black silk thread. I don't know where it went to, so that one's empty right now, but I'm sure it'll turn up eventually and I will fill it then. I put some hooks and eyes on this side, um, period buttons on this side, so pretty little jet ones, some other pearl ones, and some basically some basic china ones. I use these a lot in my underpinnings, and um, sometimes they pop off at the most inopportune moments, and so I thought it'd be a good idea to have some extras in here just in case. And I made these cute little covers. I just drilled some holes into the little pendant type things and um, made a little cover for it. And there's like little 
shelves here so it'll catch it. Just like that. So it's kind of nice and cushiony. And here's the other one. So those are done. Um, made a very pretty beaded needle case for this project. Um, so I backed it with the same silk. It has a cute little sunflower on it and it has Sarah's initials on the back. And I did some cutaway parts on it so you could actually see the silk underneath. And then there's all my needles. Four little pages of needles. And some really pretty um, silk ribbon that happens to almost exactly match the silk in the actual case, which is really cool. But I thought this would be a good spot for it, right underneath the scissors and such. Speaking of scissors, here it is. Um, it actually does keep them very secure, so I can actually even shake this, and they're not coming out. They'll slip a little bit, but they don't come out, which is really nice. Um, I saw a lot of originals that had this little tail here to kind of pull it out easily. I kind of wish I had put it on this side and not the top, but I wasn't thinking when I put it in. So there's that. And it just looks so good. And then other pieces. So I have my mother of pearl thimble, my silver thimble, made a pin cushion. Um, it has this on the bottom to kind of weight it down and to give it something just to kind of stand up on because it's round. Otherwise, it would kind of move around. Um, I filled it with emery and I feel I filled it with a mixture of emery sand and sawdust. So it's not super heavy, but it's fairly weighted. And I put like 50 pins in there, so hopefully that'll be enough. It doesn't really fit in there too much, but it fits on top pretty well and doesn't move around too much. And it fits, um, and because this has like an extra inch or so, it closes just fine. And I have, of course, my little mother of pearl yard measure. And it goes right there. I made a little emery cushion. Um, it's a little lopsided, but it works to kind of sharpen my needles. And then I made a little bit of beeswax in the exact same size and shape to kind of to mimic these to, of course, wax my thread. And that is essentially it. So there's our lovely case. I think it turned out fantastic. I don't think I could be any more pleased with this. Um, it looks so nice. I It has everything I think I could ever want <laughs> with sewing, which is a good thing. Let's try to pull this out. Here it is on the inside. So right now, it's just my big pair of scissors in there. Um, of course, this is where I'm going to put the projects that I plan on working on at an event um, and that sort of thing. So, just whatever I'm working on for a particular event, it's going to go in here. And I have all my sewing stuff in one place. So, there it is. And then we just close it up very nicely. Turn it with a little lock here. And we can't open it. It's nice and tight. So that way my things don't get rattled around. This might be my favorite project we've done so far. And it's just so pretty. Um, there's actually another box on sale on Etsy right now. And I'm seriously considering getting it to make a second one. I don't know why I need a second sewing box. But I kind of want a second sewing box now. Well, maybe I need one for the 1860s. I don't know. But I really want to make another one now. Um, now that I kind of know what I'm doing too, maybe it wouldn't take so long, this is the second one. But, very, very fun project. I certainly hope you enjoyed coming along um, and watching the unveiling from the crazy ugliness at the beginning all the way till now. I think it's a very rewarding project and something that other people can do at home um, to kind of improve their, their impressions. So, yeah, definitely, definitely a lot of fun and definitely a really nice project. But even though I really enjoy doing this project, I am ready to put it up and start working on something else. It has been taking up space in my sewing room for far too long. I think it's ready to put, the, I'm, I'm definitely ready to put this aside and work on something else. 
Uh, not that I haven't been working on projects in the meantime, but it's kind of nice to have it done and not just sitting there taunting me. So, yes, very, very pleased with it. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on this journey, and I will see you in the next video.